What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back to you with another video. And today, we are doing round two of the fan mock draft. So, obviously, um, this was all recorded as of yesterday. And again, guys, it was so fun. You guys should definitely join the Discord. And then, obviously, once you guys are there, at me, ask me what to do. The people there will already tell you what to do. It was an amazing experience. We had a bunch of, we, I think, had around like 20, 25 different people there. Uh, mocking for different teams and it was a blast i want you guys all to come there especially if you guys don't like the picks that's your own fault man you ain't the ones there you ain't the ones there it ain't my fault that you guys don't like the picks uh, most of the picks were not my picks so uh, again i want you guys to join that if you guys are new like comment subscribe we just hit 2000 last night at like 1 a.m it was awesome really awesome it's a treat so uh, i kind of wanted to do this as my 2000 video but you know, I was perfectly fine having a day before. It was, it's a true treat. So I wanted to thank you guys for it. But let's get into the picks. Obviously, there's some big fallers. Um, I'm not going to spoil too much, but I kind of just highlighted the two guys who fell pretty far in this draft. But let's get into this. So starting off with the number 33 overall pick, you guys selected Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State. Under fear that another one of these teams were going to take a Pat Fryermuth, they're just saying, screw it. We already have our corner. We can get probably tackle later on. We are going to get Pat Fryermuth. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Pat Fryermuth. As I used to be a huge Pat Fryermuth guy. I used to have him around like 12th in my draft board. But after doing a full in-depth report on him, not that high on him. I don't think he's very versatile. But he's better than what the Jags got. Is all I got to say. He's better than what the Jags got. And you guys know me. I love giving him to the Jaguars. He with Trevor Lawrence is going to be a great combo. So really can't blame it too much. The next pick, the Jets. They have a lot of issues, but you know what? Robert Sala knows how to develop some defensive ends, man. He's run a 4-3. Gregory Russo, Jalen Phillips, both really good options. They went the really high ceiling route with Gregory Russo, and I, I couldn't blame him at all. You know, again, it, this is a huge project. I don't think – I think people will actually take a shot on him, and it just depends on which team they want to do. This could be the, the second first-round pick. So we saw with this one, it was Kadarius Tony, but – Excuse me. Wow. I had a, that, that was very fun. Um, but obviously Gregory Russo is an absolute talent. He just is super duper raw and to the point where it's not like Patrick, it was not like all these other guys who developed into really good players who are raw. It's more like that Caleb on chase on type raw where it's like, we need to develop this guy. The jets have time to do that. So I like that pick quite a bit. The next pick, the dolphins, um, you know what? With questions whether Tua is actually going to be the guy long term, getting this idea, getting this notion that you got to have this combination of Alabama, 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 it ain't enough. It ain't enough because we don't even know if Tua is going to be there. Because if he does bust out this year, like bust, not like break out, bust out this year, then he's not going to be the future there. So drafting a guy who is probably not going to be super long term. Probably not going to last past three years in the NFL with his with the amount of carries he's taken. Uh, he could just be a Derrick Henry story, which is absolutely amazing. The guy had like 450 carries at his senior year in high school. Insane. Um, I I decided to go Javante Williams on this. I decided to go the young route. Now, both these guys are great studs. Uh, we already pretty much have enough of a Travis Etienne type over in Miami to the point where he's not going to add too much value. It's so down to Najee Harris, Javante Williams. And again, you guys pick whoever you want here. But Javante, again younger, a uh, lot more tread in those tires. It used to be in this RBBC role. Najee Harris is used to being a bell cow back. I think they like to use the rotation of guys here. And, you know, Najee probably is best when he gets hot and on a hot streak. You don't want to be continuing to sub guys out. Javante Williams is just super smooth when it comes to running back transitions. So I think, honestly, that was the best pick. And you guys might not like it, but I think he might be the first running back off the board in this draft. Like there, there are going to be some teams that see Javante Williams that are just like, wow. So again, only one out of 32 teams needs to fall in love with Javante Williams from big go, even like at 15, like it could be insanely high like that, but the chances are really low. Next pick, we got the Falcons and um, this was a pretty obvious pick to them. They came pretty much uh, the guys who were drafting for the Falcons came rushing to the chat saying, yo, let's get Jalen Phillips. We need to get that edge help here. They're thinking about getting it in the first. And they're like, you know what? Jalen Phillips is here, which given his concussion issues and the fact that he almost quit football, I wouldn't mind him falling this far. I'm a, I love myself some Jalen Phillips. He's a beast, but 
I know that concussions are a really big deal. A lot of people I know, including myself, have quit football because of concussions. Like, it's a real deal. We're afraid long-term how it could actually hurt us. So, you know, this could be somebody who retires in two years. That's probably why he's worth a round two pick, because he has round one talent. So I, I like Jalen Phillips. So we'll, we'll see if it actually is warranted, whether the concerns are, like, legitimate or not. But um, next pick, we got the Bengals. And these people, were, these guys were also, like, coming to the board saying, yo, put this pick in ASAP. How the heck did Elijah Vera Tucker fall this far? And again, you guys might say these are unrealistic, uh, unrealistic falls. We've seen quite a few people fall like in these drafts. So it's not out of the ordinary that AVT falls. Like, again, usually I have Rashawn Slater here at 12. So AVT fits at 14. But how many teams are going to really draft a first round guard? Because I don't think um, my buddy Mason did a sky report on AVT. He really doesn't think there's anything more than a guard in the NFL. So I, I, I'm with him on that one. So, I mean, drafting guard, this is, I mean, we could just say the Chiefs would have wanted him, maybe with the tackle. Uh, they're going to try to train him as a tackle. But I don't know. I, I like this pick a lot. I think that is kind of realistic that he could fall this far. So we're going to be rocking with the Bengals with AVT. Next pick, we got the Eagles. And apparently they're running his own scheme because I think the DB coach from the Colts are is their uh, – Defensive coordinator, you guys got to make sure if that's true. And then again, is that guy actually going to last? We don't know. But Eric Stokes is one of the best man corner, I mean, zone corners in this draft. He's not a good man corner. So if you get him, his instincts, I don't know why they are going zone with a man corner like Darius Slay. But I mean, the Eagles are the Eagles, man. They'll do whatever the hell they want. It's, it's Howie. I mean, how Howie drafts JJ Arcega White side over a freaking DK Metcalf, right? So Eric Stokes is going to be here in. If they do run zone, excellent pick. If they don't, I would be recommending a guy like even Keith Taylor here at the top of the second. I really like Keith Taylor's zone abilities and man abilities. Like they're, these guys, uh, he's really good for both. And we'll see that later on with a team that runs both a hybrid of man and zone, which is going to be fun. So next pick, the Lions, just making sure I get all the right picks here. We got Alex Leatherwood going to the Lions. And we all know that, they need some tackle slash guard help. Matt Stafford's ribs will agree. So Leatherwood is a guy who he has a lot of experience and he's going to be able to step in day one. And unlike Vitae, who has to make an awkward transition to guard, Leatherwood can make an easy one if he actually sucks. So this is just a high, a high ceiling. I mean, a high floor type of pick right here. I don't think it's a very high ceiling given the fact that Leatherwood isn't the most athletic guy in the world. And he's not very good in one-on-ones like we saw at the senior bowl. But I really don't mind it too much. I probably would have went Redunes on the board or Reduns. I don't know actually how you say it, but I know uh, that franchise guy does Redunes. So that's interesting. Uh, next pick, Panthers. I mean, they came running to the board too. They're like, shit, dude, we got to get some protection for our quarterback there. And that's going to be Dylan Redunes. So, I mean, given the big drop off to James Hudson, Jackson Carmen, Spencer Brown, Deontay Smith, uh, Walker, Little Brady Christensen. I, I don't mind this too much. Like the next round, given the fact that tackles do actually like matter a lot in the NFL, um, getting a guy like Redunes who's really good in the run game as well, depending of course, if they do trade for, uh, they, if they do trade away Christian McCaffrey along with some first to uh, Houston for Deshaun Watson, then maybe Redunes wouldn't be as great of a fit here. But I mean, I really wouldn't mind it. He's a really, really, really good run blocker. Uh, North Dakota State very heavy in that run game, so he has a lot of experience there. Denver, these guys came running to the board as well, man. Christian Barmore taking really the only potential day one defensive lineman in the like interior defensive lineman in the class. And again, people thought he was going to take the Quinn and Williams jump, and he really didn't until those last two games. And people will highlight. I mean, those are two really good games to do it in uh, during the playoffs, but. Uh, I'm again, you guys know me. I'm not very high in interior defense alignment unless you're getting an Aaron Donald or Fletcher Cox. Like, even Geno Atkins is like, he, I mean, Geno Atkins is a beast, but like, there's not that much value given from a good def interior defense alignment in the second round versus like the fifth round where you can get like a Damon Harrison type where you can just stuff the run. We see it every year. There's these interior defense alignment that just pop up for a year or two and then they just go away. And you don't need to spend a second round pick on that. But Broncos definitely could use them in there. I do like that a lot. Next, we got the Cowboys. And Cowboys, uh, we got Richie Grant coming off the board. 
So you guys are gonna be pairing him up. I literally forget the guy's name every single time. It's not Woods. It's your other guy. I know. I know you have a different safety who's actually really, really talented. Um, he's gonna be pairing up with him. So I like that a lot. You're gonna be able to pair. You're gonna now have a solid DB squad. So your secondary is completely filled right now, which is really good. I mean, you could always go another corner, which I don't know if you guys did, but Richie Grant, pretty damn solid overall. I wouldn't mind the pick too much. Again, this is no trade, so I would I would hope for a trade down before getting Richie Grant, but that's just me. Giants, you guys realize that's like, damn, well, we I'm pretty sure you guys run a 3-4, so you guys could use a really good outside linebacker, and to be honest, I mean, Jason Oway plays, I believe, in a 4-3, but, I mean, look at his size. He could play 3-4 or 4-3 with his speed. Um, I think, to to be honest, you guys have time to develop a guy like this. Obviously, Daniel Jones is not the answer. I hate to say it. He's not the answer. As much as I would love for him to be, he's not. You have time to develop a guy with such a high ceiling, like Jason Owe. And I can't blame it too much. I've been doing that pick myself. So, again, don't blame it at all. We're going to see what the next picks are. Um, and the next, ooh. This is going to be pissing off some 49ers fans. I'll just give you guys a heads up. They're looking at the interior offensive linemen. And to be honest, I would I, – I would have went this route. I would like with all the guys on the board, I would have definitely went that route. But they decided that edge needed to be the priority. They it was a very underrated need with obviously D Ford that probably should be cut. Make around $16 million in cap space. I don't know how much of that is guaranteed. So I think it's at least about eight million that you'll free up in cap. You guys went with a guy who they were you guys were stuck between Boogie and Quincy Roche landing on Quincy Roche, having a true technician on that outside. Um, I mean, I didn't mind it too much if there weren't Creed Humphrey, Land Dickerson, Trey Smith, Deontay Brown on the board. But you know what? Quincy Roche, really talented edge, could develop into something special. I don't know. He, he's, he's a high floor guy. So if you guys want to continue competing, he wouldn't be the worst pick there. Next, we got the Chargers. Chargers, you guys were... This is an interesting ass pick, but you guys got to wait for round three because this was a three round mock. You guys got to wait till round three to be able to see what you guys just stole, which is absolutely asinine ridiculous. You guys went Nico Collins at this pick. Very interesting option. Maybe to replace Mike Williams, but because I think Mike Williams got extended for one year. Um, even with uh, with him being extended for many years, you can have three pretty much three towers there with Nico Collins and Mike Williams as well as Keenan Allen. Wouldn't mind that. But there's also just so many things on the board. You guys need offense alignment like nobody's business. But stick around for round three because, hint, hint, there's some good offense alignment that unfortunately fall, which is very unrealistic in my draft. But Jacksonville. You guys also came running to the podium. Like A lot of these picks went by really fast because – these guys were just like, dude, we're going to just light it up. Javon Holland was the pick here. Easily probably the third best safety in the class. Paris Ford is pretty damn good as well. But, I mean, Andre Sisko, I'm a huge I'm – I'm a pretty big fan of the potential of all these safeties here. Um, from here on down, I don't know about Treek Thompson, but, I mean, Javon Holland can play slot corner as well if you need to. I'm a huge fan of that. So, next, we got the, we got the Patriots. And I don't think if you guys, I don't think you guys realize this, but Mac Jones is still on the board and you guys were like, uh, okay. So you guys were messing around with me. I know you guys, there was two of them in the chat and they were just like, uh, obviously we have a voice chat. So they were like, oh, well, we're going to go two two at well probably here. And I was like, what the fuck? But no, they, they're, they knew Mac Jones all the way. So Saban Belichick connection, probably going to be this pick in the first round, but you never know. You never know. Next pick, we got the Arizona Cardinals, and we all knew you guys needed a man corner, and you guys did not go Aaron Robinson because you guys think he's more of a slot, and he did play quite a few reps at slot. You guys went Greg Newsom out of Northwestern, and honestly, I'm going to be honest, I don't mind this at all. You know, look at it. He's young. He's big. Big isn't tall. He's definitely not like a big hulking, like 210-pounder. 210 like, he's a really talented man corner there for Northwestern, so... You guys needed it, and obviously the first-round pick was kind of a bust for you guys, so um, <laughs> I'm calling out the guys who picked for the Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, Cardinals fans, Red Sea, um, and then there's a couple other of you guys. Definitely join 
and then put Arizona as your number one team when you guys DM me because, I mean, heck, that means that you guys will – I always usually give people their number one team. That means you guys will be probably the decision makers on who the hell to draft because we got people who were – this is like their third or fourth pick trying to get the Cardinals here. So, again, you guys want to change it, you guys have the power to do that. That's what I love about this. It's you guys, and it's not my fault anymore. <laughs> so you guys can only be mad at yourselves. So next, we got the Raiders. And Raiders, you guys had a pretty good fall as well with Davion Nixon here. Uh, I'm not a fan of interior defensive linemen, but they're pretty good. So, I mean, again, I'm not a fan of day one interior defensive linemen or tight ends unless they're a Kyle Pitts. I I'm similar to, I guess, you can call uh, PFF in that regard. Just don't think they add too much to the team. But, hey, you know, Davion Nixon is worth it. He definitely seems like a type of Raiders type of dude. But I would have probably waited for Marvin Wilson, if we're going to be honest, like maybe to the third for Marvin. I think this could have been a better pick. But, hey, I don't mind it. I really don't mind it. I've probably done this pick multiple times myself. It's really not a bad pick. And the next pick, the Dolphins. I mean, you guys already know where I'm going. This this was a team I drafted for. we got Creed Humphrey out of Oklahoma. Being able to play center – as well as guard if you need him to. Like, let's just say Eric Flowers is a complete bust and you guys have a better center there because I think Ted Karras needs to leave. And then now you're going to be able to have um, Penny Suell, Austin Jackson, Creed Humphrey, Eric Flowers, Robert Hunt. That is a solid, solidified offensive line, especially with Austin Jackson going to be in his second year. Like, this is exactly what you're looking for, for a guy like Tua. And plus, Creed Humphrey is used to, like, I believe Tua's not that tall. He's used to passing, uh, snapping to shorter quarterback so it wouldn't hurt at all i like this I, I like this pick a lot i honestly think it could be potentially their second first round pick it's just it's a weird feeling i get in washington you guys are next and we have uh i remember there was a washington uh the guy who was drafting was not a washington fan but he had a buddy who was and he was like no matter what if Dwayne eskridge is there take him and you guys know me i love Dwayne eskridge so so much he's an absolute beast and i'm a huge fan of Dwayne. so i uh, really think that he's gonna be a dynamic weapon for the squad maybe he can go in the slot but this dude can play on the outside i'm telling you this guy is a real real really good threat like i'm telling you this guy's dangerous he will be a big a uh, big player in this league he could fall into that Devin DuVernay category, which is the type of wide receiver that's kind of like, you know, people have their types when it comes to like looking at other people and finding them attractive. The, these route runners that can get like some nice separation, that might be my type, but we'll see. Next, the Bears. What did we get? We got Amon Ross St. Brown for the Bears. Very interesting. Uh, bringing him to the Bears is like kind of bringing what Anthony Miller should have been. I like it a lot, actually, because you got the kid from Tulane. Um, if you get AR-12 back, then you have a really solidified wide receiver core. The Bears always have a really good wide receiver core. I don't know why, but they always do. And it's always super deep, and it's always super underrated. But people who know football will know how good the Bears uh, wide receiver roster is every single year. And next, we got the Colts. And um, I didn't really understand this pick. But, uh, I mean, I brought, I brought it up as a concern when we, when we were talking about it. But they chose Aaron Robinson out of UCF here. And to me, I, this is why I'm going to have a pushback on this pick. Uh, Aaron Robinson is, A, to me, a pure man corner. B, a slot corner. So, to me, it's like you guys run a pretty heavy zone scheme. So, there's guys like Ifatu Melfanwu and Paulson Adebo, Keith Taylor on the board, who are all really good zone corners that – that makes me a little bit uneasy with this pick. If they went Keith Taylor over Israel, I mean Israel Mukwamu, uh, over Ifiatu Malafonwu, okay. But I'm not a huge fan of this pick at all. Honestly, I'm going to say he should go to the Lions here at this pick. I don't think he gets past that spot because they really need a slot corner. That's a really good man corner. Aaron Robinson would be a really, really good threat there. Titans. You guys went an interesting route here. You guys are like, you know what? We don't need interior defensive linemen at this spot. We're going Rondale Moore out of Purdue. I mean, I can't, I can't mind that pick whatsoever. But again, is Mac Jones going to actually fall to um, where the heck are the Patriots? There we go to forty-seven. No, but Rondale Moore slips past the Patriots in this one. Pretty good, pretty good value, especially for the upside. 
definitely giving someone for Tannehill to potentially check down to. I don't think Rondell Moore's play speed is really as good as people think, but his burst is definitely up there with some of the best. So lots of respect for Rondell Moore as a weapon in this league. So checking next, of course, I have all the picks right here. Uh, we got the Seattle Seahawks, and they go Jackson Carmen. So obviously some of you guys uh, have been complaining about Jackson Carmen to the Seahawks, but uh, to be fair, don't really care too much. I think you guys do need to get some tackle help, but I will say this. You guys do need to get into your offensive lineman more. You got Damian Lewis. Is his name Damian Lewis? Uh, is something Lewis there out of LSU, I believe at right guard, doing great. But Ayu Potty is dying at left guard. Like he literally could be on his deathbed soon. So with guys like Landon Dickerson, Trey Smith, Deontay Brown here, there's just, to me, there's no excuse for that. I would 100% have gone to guard there. And you know me, I like getting some tackles. But Steelers, um, y- y'all going to get pissed at this because – I'm going to be honest. I did not see these two running backs on the board, but to keep it realistic, I have some insider information on certain teams that know that Elijah Molden is, I quote, a day one, day one, first round slot slash nickel corner prospect. And you know who just, who just lost two nickel corners slash slot corners? Steelers. And we all know that the Steelers had a really tough time without a run game last year. 100% true. 100% true. But I will push back with this. The Steelers were 11-0 and and then went something like 5-1. and I mean, 1-5 with their next games after Devin Bush got injured. Defense matters so much to the Steelers as well. Our offense can do whatever it wants. Obviously, it needs a run game. But I think our defense can't be our Achilles heel offense can easily be better as an Achilles heel than anything. Cause Ben is not going to be able to put up about like 40 points a game. That's not something we need to do. We need to make sure we can limit the amount of points per game. I chose Elijah Molden on Washington here. I have a mid to early first on Elijah Molden. I would have put him in the top 10 if you weren't just kind of a pure slot corner. Plus with Terrell Edmonds, I mean, potentially uh, leaving in the future. I don't think so. I think they still have time to a short-term contract. Elijah Mullen can put, move to strong safety. You guys aren't going to like that with Najee Harris on the board in Travis CTN, but I thought that was a really good pick. And to keep it fair and honest, Elijah Molden will go before those other two. That's just, that's my prediction. That's my prediction. Elijah Molden will be taken before both of these guys. Just watch out. And I think he might be gone by, I think he might be gone by the first round, uh, the Steelers picking the first. It's, it's a bold prediction by me, but, I'm pretty sure I know it's going to happen. Rams. Now we're going to look at, like, what do we get for you guys here? So this is another pick I, I chose for um, the teams. And I'm, I went Spencer Brown here. Guy with the highest ceiling left on the board by far. The Rams definitely need to be able to replace left tackle. I know Spencer played right tackle at Northern Iowa as well as in the Senior Bowl. But his tape is unbelievable at the Senior Bowl. That guy has so much power. He's 25 years old, so the Rams are already in playoffs slash Super Bowl contention. Putting Spencer Brown in, even if Whitworth returns, that will allow Spencer Brown to have more time to adjust and be a really, really good lineman to fill in. This is The Rams need to be, make sure that their line is good for Stafford. You cannot have Stafford continue to get injured. Even though he's an Iron Man, you don't want him to have to be. You want to be able to take shots in the playoffs, potentially, and then survive those and be an Iron Man rather than have to do it during the season. Spencer Brown... Uh, to me, it was the right pick. Next, we got the Browns. Browns, what do we get for you guys? Ooh, we got Boogie Basham. We, as in you guys, got Boogie Basham. Again, the teams I drafted for, Bucks, Rams, and Steelers, and Dolphins. So, guys get mad at me for all those picks, which I tried to keep it a little bit different, a little bit special, but I, I like these picks a lot. Ravens, uh, we went Hamilcar Rashad. That was Camel Wolf right there. Again, I don't know anything about Hamilcar Rashad. Gonna be 100% honest. I need to watch more and more tape on him, but haven't had the time yet. So we'll keep our eye on him. But for right now, I'm gonna trust the judgment of TDN, which I shouldn't, as well as Camel Wolf, Camel Car Rashad, adding to the edge core in Baltimore, building up that defense along with Nick Bolton to provide a really, really lethal squad. So next pick, New Orleans Saints. Um, another questionable one. Because in a man scheme, you guys chose Ifiatu Melifonwu 
out of Syracuse. Again, not a huge fan of it just because scheme dependence. If the Saints were going to go zone corners, 100% agree. But I think that they're definitely more man heavy. And if Yatu Melifonwu with his athleticism and the fact that you're losing possibly Marcus Williams, I don't think this is the right pick. For me, I would have went a guy more like Israel Mukuwamu or Trill Williams if you really wanted to get a corner here. But I personally would have went a guy like Tylen Wallace, Elijah Moore, Deami Brown, or Seth Williams even at this spot. Even though I have like a, I believe I have a mid to late third on Seth Williams just because how raw he is. But I'm telling you, not a huge fan of that pick. And the Packers, this is Mason's team, so I let him draft for it. So the the Packers are drafting a linebacker who is named Baron Browning out of the Ohio State University. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this pick just because I don't think Baron Browning's personality fits what they should be having there in uh, in Green Bay. It just seems like you're adding more personalities when you should be adding less. Try to keep down on the drama because I heard Baron Browning doesn't like to work that much, but seems like that those wishes have kind of, I mean, those rumors have kind of went away with how he played this year, especially going through COVID and everything. He could have been an easy COVID opt out and still would have been like probably a third, maybe fourth round pick. Baron Brownie has a lot of untapped potential. I like him a lot. And then next we have the bills, another team for Mason. And he was, he literally said in quotes, fuck it, Joe Tryon. Why not? You know, the bills, they're already that good to where you get potentially similar to the Ed Oliver pick. Somebody who could be one of the best in their class, if not in the league. Joe Tryon has a lot of untapped potential. So bring him to the Bills, and if you have Jerry Hughes for one more year, Joe Tryon could 100% learn from him and be able to just be an absolute animal. I don't like the idea of him being the first, but him in the late second, that's something I could be a lot more comfortable with. Chiefs. Chiefs, this was another Camel Wolf team, and I totally support this. This pick was Chaz Surratt blitzing former quarterback out of UNC. I really like Chaz Surratt a lot. So, I mean, heck, getting him here is a really, really, really good value. Don't mind it at all. Yes, Dylan Moses is falling, by the way. Along with somebody who I got bitched at for not taking at in the first round. Well, what about now? Najee Harris is here. You guys wanted uh, Adrian Peterson pretty much out of uh, Leonard Fournette, making sure I take, didn't take Travis Etienne here. You guys wanted to pretty much make Adrian Peterson out of Leonard Fournette. Fournette. It didn't happen. Najee Harris is a lot better in the receiving game as well. And he's a true power back. Travis Etienne, home run hitter, similar-ish to, uh, to what you already have there in Rojo. So I'm going to be 100% down on this Najee Harris train. And now you guys have two of the highest end weapons, arguably – in the league for a running back, you have Rojo and Najee. And then you can honestly bring back Fournette if you want to have like a three headed monster there. Keyshawn Vaughn, not really worth it to me, but really dig this a lot. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, join that discord. And I'm telling you right now, go to manscaped.com. Use my 20% off free uh, shipping discount code. Hail Mary, all caps, no spaces down in the description. Look at the description guys. You guys know what to do. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.